A new poll suggests Governor Rick Scott faces an uphill battle in his race against Charlie Crist. For weeks, Scott's been stressing that while Crist was governor, the state fell into a recession. The university finds that 54% don't think he deserves a second term. But it appears his momentum has stalled when it comes to a re-election. Rick Scott is considering a major policy change. Scott is looking to gain more support with the Hispanic community, and he could use college. But has he stayed true to all of his campaign claims? Reporter Noah Pransky once again fires up the 10 News Truth Test to fact check the governor's promises. With a 29% approval rating, things haven't exactly been easy so far for Rick Scott in Tallahassee, but his mantra is to be the most successful, not the most popular. What about the most truthful? We find out how his campaign promises stack up when they face the truth test. What we're going to have to require state workers to do, only state workers, is contribute a nominal sum to their retirement. When Scott signed the budget, Florida became the 50th state to require some sort of contribution from state employees when it comes to their retirement benefits. It was one of Scott's easiest sells this session, and consider that a promise fulfilled. I've been pretty tough on the president, but he asked for it. It's time to fight back and hold government accountable. Scott Lane did a body blow on the president when he told him to go spend his high-speed rail money elsewhere. Whether it was right or wrong, an argument for another day. But Scott has fulfilled his promise to be the anti-Obama. Rick Scott backs Arizona's law. He'll bring it to Florida. Not only did Scott drop his plan for an Arizona-style immigration law, but he couldn't even get employers across the state to use E-Verify. It was a humbling lesson in dealing with the state legislature and one of Scott's first promises broken. He also bashed Alex Sink's support of stimulus funds. The one that gave us big debts and no jobs. Then accepted over $300 million of stimulus funds in this year's budget. You know, you figure out where uh, it builds jobs or where it hurts jobs, and that's, that's sort of the uh, filter I went through. The governor failed that campaign claim, too, but he's got more success successes than failures overall, including selling the state plane, instituting teacher merit pay, expanding charter schools, and reforming both citizens insurance and sinkhole coverages. He also promised accountability budgeting, cut property taxes. Scott failed on that promise this year, just wasn't in the cards with all the other cuts across the state. Reduce the government workforce, eliminate earmarks. While the governor cut hundreds of millions of earmarks across the state, he left plenty in this year's budget. A number of them favors the powerful legislators like J.D. Alexander from Polk County and Will Weatherford from Wesley Chapel. Drug test welfare recipients and phase out the business income tax to create good jobs. The jury's still out on the corporate income tax promise. It was lowered a little bit this year, not as much as Scott had wanted, so he's got his work cut out for him in the future if he wants to phase it out altogether. Overall, the governor gets a B for staying truthful to what he promised. Remember, we aren't grading his performance, just whether his campaign promises held true. That said, maybe the biggest surprise of 2011 is that Scott's approval rating stands at just 29%, even though he's done almost exactly what he promised when 48% of the state elected him. I'm Noah Pransky, and I approved this truth test. We should know who's here legally or illegally. If you're stopped for doing something illegal, you should be able to be asked, just like you're asked for your ID, whether you're legal or not. Rick Scott has vetoed a bill that would have allowed children of immigrants living in the U.S. illegally to get a temporary driver's license. The legislature passed the bill with a nearly unanimous... Passed undocumented young people in Florida would have been able to drive to school or work without the threat of being deported. Everything, they affect real people.